Hello everyone. How are you today? I hope you are doing well. I'm glad to see you again. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you about the classification of angioplastic drugs. Before I start, let me explain you about the neoplasm itself briefly. So, neoplasm, or also known as tumor, is a cell disease characterized by disruption or failure of mechanisms that regulate proliferation and homeostatic function. Normally, cell growth slowly, controllable, and predictable. However, neoplasm grows faster than usual. It's an uncontrolled growth which is unresponsive to feedback in cell proliferation settings. The cause of this case is related to the change of DNA, the combination of activation of cancer-causing genes, and inactivation of tumor suppressor genes. Then, what is antineoplastic drugs? Antineoplastic drugs are cytotoxic medications used to treat cancer. They work specifically at certain phases of the cell cycle. This antineoplastic can induce malignant cell resistance to drugs and generally given by oral or intravenously. Some of them might topical, intra-arterial, intratecal, or installation into body cavities. However, most of antineoplastic are teratogenic, so this kind of drugs should be prescribed by a qualified doctor. Okay, so let's jump into each classification of antineoplastic drugs. The antineoplastic drugs have eight classifications. They are alkylating agents, antimetabolic, plant alkaloid, antibiotic, hormone and the blocker, radioactive iodine, immunostimulant, and other anti-cancer. We are going to talk seven of them, excluding the radioactive iodine. Let's start with alkylating agents. The alkylating agent is a broad-spectrum antineoplastic work by interferon cell division and DNA structure of malignant cell at cleavage time or a resting phase of cell. This type of drug is effective for hematologic neoplasm, breast, lungs, and ovarian tumor. The side effect of this drug is patient can suffer from spinal cord depression. The example of this kind of drugs are mustard nitrogen, busulfan, corambucil, cyclophosphamide, and many more. Second, it's antimetabolic. Antimetabolic is an oral and parenteral drug that works by resembling the nutrients that cells need for reproduction by forming abnormal DNA that causes cell death. The example of this kind of drugs are folic acid antagonist, for example, the methotrexate. Pyrimine antagonist, they are mercaptoporin and theoguanin. Pyrimidine antagonists, they are fluororacyl and fluoroxidin. And DNA polymerase inhibitors or ceterabin. The toxic effect from antimetabolic drugs are bone marrow depression and gastrointestinal epithelium and hair follicles damage. Next, we got plant alkaloid. The plant alkaloid is a type of drug that inhibits cell division and antimetasis. It involves podophyllotoxin derivatives, they are atoposide and teniposide, and finca derivatives, the finblastin and fincristin. Let's talk about the podophyllotoxin derivatives the atoposide and teniposide. The use of atoposide is to lung and testicular cancer which are not responding anymore to surgery, radiation, or other chemotherapy treatment. Whereas, teniposide is used for acute lymphocytic leukemia in children. Like any other antineoplastic drug, this type of drug has toxic side effects. There are bone marrow depression, nausea, vomiting, and peripheral neuropathy. Let's move on. Now we have antibiotic, including bleomycin, 
Dakhtin Yomaisin, Dana Robison, Darksa Robison, Ida Robison, Mitomycin, and Pentastin. The use of this drug is to prevent cell division and affecting the synthesis of DNA or RNA. Unfortunately, this kind of drug has severe toxic effects too. All of antibiotic drugs mentioned before, except for bleomycin, can cause an extravasation, a tissue irritation, and tissue necrosis on IV administration. The side effect for bleomycin is of its lung toxic. Other effects from antimetabolic drugs are bone marrow depression and cardiac toxic caused by the doxorubicin, donorubicin, and idorubicin. Number 5. Hormones The hormone wars changing the hormonal environment that supports the growth of cancer cells. They are reproduction hormone and adrenal corticosteroid hormone. The reproduction hormone works for reproductive organ cancer, and the adrenal corticosteroid hormone works to suppress the formation and function of lymphocytes. It is mostly for acute leukemia in children, malignant lymphoma, and many other cancer complications like intracranial metastasis and hypercalcemia. The last two types of antineoplastic drugs are immunostimulant and other type of anti-cancer. The immunostimulant is a biologic responsive modifier which means a drug that alters the host response to cancer. There are interferon alpha 2A and interferon alpha 2B. Both of these types act as an antiviral, anti-cancer, and immunomodulator naturally. The antigenous interferon will is triggered by viral infection and other stimuli, actively fight solid tumors, hematological neoplasms, and viral infections. The way it works as an anti-cancer is by enhancing hot immune response and directly has anti-proliferative effect on cancer cells by prolonging the G0 phase to prevent proliferation and converting proliferative cells into non-proliferative cell form. This drug is mostly used for leukemia, malignant melanoma, and Kaposi sarcoma in AIDS patients. The toxic effects of this type of drug are flu-like syndrome, for example fever, fatigue, myalgia, headache, and shiver, anorexia, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. The long-term treatment can cause bone marrow depression, thyroid dysfunction, alopecia, cardiotoxic, and neurotoxic. The example of another type of anti-cancer is asparaginase, which works to converting the amino acid asparagin into aspartic acid which is needed in protein synthesis. It works selectively on the G1 phase. The indication for this type of drug is acute lymphocytic leukemia. The side effects can cause the deficiency of coagulation substances, injury to the liver, pancreas and kidneys, CNS depression, nausea and vomiting, and anaphylaxis shock. We all know that mostly of the toxic effects of antineoplastic drugs are bone marrow depression, also neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, and anemia. In addition, certain digestive injuries, namely stomatitis and diarrhea, can occur. Nausea and vomiting, alopecia, toxic to the reproductive system, hyperuricemia, extravasation, unique toxicity, and carcinogenesis are also side effects of antineoplastic drugs. This type of drugs is cytotoxic. It can cause cell damages. When administered this drug, it should be performed by a professional. If extravasation occurs, stop the infusion and remove as much of the extravasous fluid as possible. Remove the cannula and apply an ice pack to the affected area. Let it cool for 24 hours and then apply hydrocortisone 1% cream 2 times a day. After the treatment, record the period and schedule of administration in the patient record and report to the doctor or specialist. If the patient vomits, administer IV ondansterone and IV dexamethasone, followed by oral domperidone and dexamethasone. 
It can also be given diazepam as much as 5 mg in one hour before coming to the hospital. These treatments can minimize the possible toxic effects of cytotoxic neoplastic drugs. Alright, let's go to the quiz. I'll give you one question to review what you've got today. Number 1. Which of these drugs work for lung and testicular cancer that are not responding anymore to surgery and treatment? A. Atoposide B. Teniposide C. Bleomycin D. Doxorubicin E. Corambucil Okay, that's all for today. We have learned about the classification of antineoplastic drugs. There are various types of antineoplastic drugs, the alkylating agents, antimetabolic, plant alkaloid, antibiotic, hormone and the blocker, immunostimulant, and other anti-cancer. Each antineoplastic works in different way and have various indications. In the next class, we're going to talk about infection drugs. Thanks for watching. See you next time.